All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our next talk. Our speaker now is Kim Paulison. She's a longtime Flown developer for the KU Leuven University Web Management System. Uh, is an active part of the community. In fact, she put in a nomination to be on the board for the next term. So find out later today how that turns out. Um, Kim is going to talk about playing with blocks and cards, mosaic, Volto, and and all that good stuff. So go ahead, Kim. All right. Thank you, Chrissy. Oop, I already messed it up. So the talk is about playing with blocks and cards. And not like you would think, it's not about all the blocks, blocks, blocks that Timo has been mentioning, although we're going to get to that at the end of the presentation. Uh, what this talk is actually about, because blocks and cards is one of those words where you actually know nothing when I tell you about blocks and cards, is basically uh, what we use in our university is bootstrap cards that we want to have for creating flexible content listings. And this is a bit the story of all of those blocks overviews, I'll call them in this talks, uh, through all the Plone versions. Uh, We'll get to that later. Um, just as a reference, if, if we would speak of this in Volto term, terminology, it's about grid views, no, grid blocks. And then uh, the bootstrap cards are the teasers, as they are called in the Volto landscape. Just so I confuse you a bit more about all the blocks and cards and grids and everything else. But the picture says more than a thousand words. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, this is, um, as I said, going to be con flexible content listings with cards in Plone 4, 5, and 6, uh, and a little intermezzo on hacking. If you haven't seen these before, there's a whole YouTube rabbit hole you can down to with new pro hacker god, like all different versions. So the, how should I say? We're going to start with the easy stuff, so Plone 4, and move along to the at least better stuff to the end, which is, of course, Plone 6. So that's what I just said. Uh, the noob that we see here are the blocks overviews that we made uh, in Plone 4. There's a little intermezzo where I show a little dirty hack to insert the different blocks views inside Plone pages, uh, then the blocks overviews in Plone 5 and in Plone 6. So uh, it's a long story. I'll try to make it brief. The presentation took too long when I practiced it. Uh, block overviews in Plone 4. Uh, we made a little, well, a little, a big MyKLV project. We redid the whole uh, KLV University intranet last year. And one of the use cases was to show pretty uh, news items. So depending on who you are, when you log in, you get a little overview of the news items that are specifically relevant to you based on the information they have for you. But in our case, um, it was yet another news overview. It needed to be pretty. It needed to be in the house style. And we had things that were similar. We had like one or two listing views that sort of resembled nice little blocks. And then we had to make a third one. So what does a developer do with all that redundancy? He automates that, or she in this case, I should say. Uh, so that's why we started thinking about how can we make it easy for our users to, to show little blocks of all the news items uh, in a page or just on any kind of overview, like folders or collections and make it easy for the users to switch between those layouts because depending on your content, you might want a different overview or more or less columns or the image on the left or the image at the top. And there's like a gazillion combinations we could make in the existing house that we have. So obviously it will be easier if I just show you what I mean. If the internet works with me. Okay, so this, this is our generic demo site that I make with all, all my animals. So this is the idea that we make uh, an overview. This is automatically generated. As you see, this is a collection in Plone 4. And we have, this is now a really big one. 
a blocks view selection to do that. We're gonna head over to a little test that I made up so I can play with the display without destroying my nice little example. Uh, so as you can see, this is, a, well, I, I don't know if you can see a fully automated overview with blocks. And this is actually a folder. This is an image. These are news items, which you can say publication date or not. And this is an event, and these are more images. And what we did was we made the blocks view available to the end users. It is really slow, where you can, uh, well, well, a user can see little preview displays on how that specific display would look if you choose it. And so I, these changes, the images are still full size. Now let's see if I, for example, change it back to, always nice giving a presentation when the internet is not helping. live demos. Mm -hmm. So this is another view that is, these are all, uh, we have a specific house style as you can see, so they're not default bootstrap cards. Bootstrap cards would be much easier, but we had to account for all the different left and right and top versions of the cards or teasers that we have. And as you can see, the there's a little, I wanna say AI, but it's not that smart, but uh, the card knows uh, how many columns it is being displayed in and it will display an image, for example, here, because if we would do that over full width in this display, it would look like nothing or you would just see an ear or something. Uh, so that's basically the functionality that we were going for. Uh, this was added on each folder and each collection. So basically on all the folderish content types. I'm gonna quickly go back here. and. Also demo a bit of the code because that's all very nice that it works, but probably some of you are wondering how we did that. And the, the nice thing that, well, that the thing I enjoyed most building this was, well, that the users could actually use and choose their listings, obviously, but it's actually, a couple of files in the browser folder in the, in the Keonova package, well, a, a Plone package. Um, it was made with the Plone CLI. Thank you, Mike, that works very well. Uh, and then we just registered uh, blocks in this case is actually your grid. So it's the number of columns that you want your uh, blocks to be shown in. And the cards is um, the different cards that an image can have or a news item can have. So just to show you, uh, so it's based on content listing, not really that important, but for people still using Plone 4, like our university, at, at content listing is a content listing view that is available on all uh, folderish content types. Uh, so we could just register all of these views for the iFolderish interface as well and reuse some functionality from the content listing. Uh, and these are all the views, but as you can see, it's a lot of ZCML registration, but these are all available views. And actually in the preview, we only show six, but we actually have about 16 variations or at least 12. We only show the ones that make sense uh, design-wise. Uh, so a lot of registration, but what I really want to show is the blocks by and that's the, the cards will be just about the same. You have a base blocks view, which needs to do some magic with the batching because you can also have on a folder uh, many items. So you need to be able to do a uh, pagination. Uh, and then as you can see, it's a very nice object oriented. All we have to define the columns is a class and one or two properties to say which card it wants to use and how many columns it will have. That was really, I thought I'm, I'm gonna have a whole lot of work, but adding a view was basically adding two or three lines. And the card CCML I'm not gonna show, that's the registration of all the little card views. 
we provided little teaser views, which is just a plain HTML version of any content item, and then made that specific, like the image uh, that has a different view in the one column than in the one uh, more columns view. Uh, cards the same. You have a base card view, and then we have a con config file that holds all the card classes, image classes, and card content classes. This is obviously very specific to the design we have uh, at the university. It's basically that you have like three divs inside each other, and each div needs a different class to say uh, where the image goes left or right and things like that. So that's what the helper classes do. And then we have the separate, uh, we have a base news item card view because news has publication date and uh, an image and you want to have it make different decisions on that. But here is the same thing again. You have a class that inherits all news classes, uh, new card classes inherit from the base card view. And you just add one property that says, this is where the image goes, or this is the card type in this case. And then for the image is the same. It needs to, well, it just needs a different URL because you need to go to the view of the image on the news item. You need to go to the item itself. So those little tweaks are covered. Uh, and same for the image card. All we need to do is register a new class and set one property. That's it. That's the whole thing. And that generates all that. I'll just quickly show the config. That is not here. Just to show you that it was made, um, our KU Leuven Huistel is based on Bootstrap 4 at the moment. And all the configuration, as you can see, this is very specific to the design system. But this is, as you can see, the column classes are just plain bootstrap classes, and they just get triggered depending on which blocks you, you choose. All right, that was that. Um, that was the main, well, that was actually not the reason that I had to create uh, the block shoes because, as I said, it was made for the Mike uh, and the Mike Leuven card. I will also demo um, having the blocks and the cards views as base views in a package that was available on our setup. It was actually very easy to then also reuse all of that functionality in a different package, the Mike Leuven package. Uh, and all we had to do there, well, it's still a bit much. We still had to override the PY and the PT because it needed a little logic. And I will show you. Really doesn't want to help me today. So this is the homepage. Uh, and this is my customized news. So as you can see here, these are also same cards, but in a different style a bit. But the only thing that's different here is, for example, we could add the, the tag. Specifically here, we needed to have a different URL. It's not just the subject that goes to the subject line. It goes to a specific theme or channel. It's, it's very specific. But as you can see, they have links, and they then go to the specific category or, or subject you that news item came from. So you can always get back to something that is very specific to this Mike Leuven application. But everything else of the logic of displaying and showing publication stuff, all done in the basic cards view, well, blocks and card view. And uh, we, we haven't explored it further because obviously we're migrating to Plone 5 and we'll want to look at how that uh, works in Plone 6, but it would actually be possible to extend uh, those cards, like we did for my Leuven, for example, for the search, where you have a little more specific card that shows you the list of subjects with a link on it that shows you when it was published and which folder it is added. So those are all little tweaks you could add to, to card overrides in your own packages. I'm going to quickly go over this. This is Mr. Hacker. Uh, do not try this at home. You're not supposed to. We we find we found a way because we have the at at card view and the at at blocks one call whatever views. 
it turned out to be really easy to add that inside the page. We haven't automated it yet in Plum 4, but there is a way. And that's actually with the, with the basic Ajax call. Again, not opening my web. This is a little documentation page I wrote for our team inside. Uh, it actually allows you to include uh, a card or, or a teaser or a whole collection from a completely different plone site than this one. That's why I say don't try this at home. It's a security thing. We have our course settings specifically set up and, and uh, you're not really supposed to do that unless you trust the people working on it and that's all secured where we are. But um, I'm wondering how I can show you. Uh, this teaser, it has a title and if you see, I don't know if you can read my status bar, but it clearly says, uh, so that's the new site. And that is not, as you can see, VMS demo. Obviously, same domain, but different subdomain. But for us, it means that it's, for example, possible to show the news of uh, one faculty inside of the website of, of the new site or news from the new site on a departmental homepage, things like that. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. probably bad <laughs> showing you how to do it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's an Ajax call. Uh, just know that it probably won't work uh, course-wide on a lot of situations. Um, all you have to do is add a div inside a page where you want that overview to appear. And then you do a little document ready function and you say, load this URL and you use the card top view. And the same for the blocks views. You can just say, this is the URL of the thing I want and insert me of that uh, collection or folder. It has to be a folder or a collection for the blocks view. Uh, something with two columns where the image is 25% of the width. And then, of course, you need your CSS selectors to specifically say, in this case, for example, you can just say, get me that content, show it in this view, and show me only the first six divs of that thing you have there. So that's all magic you can do with Ajax and a little CSS or jQuery selectors. Okay, that's for our hacking internet. So I need to watch my time here. How far are we? I have 15 minutes left or so. Blocks in Plone 5. Obviously, we are migrating to Plone 5 now, and this is one of the first things that we wanted to have fixed. Uh, the good news was that we could actually just migrate it, migrate the code as it was to Plone 5 without any changes because it's plain ZCML registrations. It's very basic views. We didn't even have to fiddle too much with the batch. It just worked. Um, the only thing we had to change is there's no more at, at content listing. So we had to change all the iFolderish interfaces to the registration for both the folder content type and the collection uh, content type. I'm going to switch the demo because I want to show the mosaic version. Uh, but then we thought since we just had to, I had to show you that little hack to get the block views inside the pages, we thought, but hey, on five, we can use mosaic. And mosaic should make it possible to just drag and drop a block into a page using that view that we've already made. Now, obviously, it wasn't that easy. So we did have to. Uh, well, uh, I have to say thank you, Michael. We have a, a, a bunch of new guys and one of the new guys um, actually wrote the code for that without any assistance of me for, for writing mosaic tiles. He did have to completely rewrite what I did for the blocks and cards in Plone 4 to make it work in mosaic, but the idea is basically still the same. So what we did was we added the option to, to uh, show the blocks version of a content listing on the content listing tile. So now if you choose a content listing, let me just show you obviously, um, show a content, choose a content listing tile, you can choose just like before the different blocks views. And it's unfortunately not with the fancy previews that we had in Plone, well, for the folders and collections, but hey. Uh, so let's just first go here. Just so you know, this is the same um, blocks overview. See, we still have blocks view on the document. 
And as you can see, I have a nice collection of Nick Cage images implanted here. So this is the end result of showing a lot of um, content listing tiles with the blocks you implemented on them uh, in a Plum 5 site. Uh, Nicholas Cage pictures uh, provided to you by Zopix Ipsum Plone. If you, he, Zopix, thank you. He made this little, make a bunch of documents, images and files in the site, like you can see all here. And the images are of Nick Cage, so. Uh, I added these here and I will just live demonstrate, hopefully, how you can now choose the blocks you want to content list. Find the edit button. If you work with too many plone versions, you get confused on where you have to click edit. And this is a known issue. I always tell my guys that I need to fill up space while waiting for browsers. Luckily, I usually talk too much. And, ah, I was just thinking, and now obviously Mosaic will fail on me. All good. We're here. Now, I want to move the zoom window away and insert more a content listing. As you can see already here, there is a one column thing. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, so, well, this is actually fine. This is just document one and two. Uh, anything here, obviously you can adjust the collection just like you would. Let's say I will only want two in this case. And this is the thing we added to the content line. So we did have to register obviously all the different views and uh, make sure that they would work on the content listing tile. So these are the same thumbnail views you have on the folders in the collections. Let's say, what do we want? I don't know, three columns, oh, then I need three, right? Three items in three columns with the image at the top. And you can already see it here, voila, let's move that here. And voila, there you go. We have a content listing tile showing nice teasers or bootstrap cards or whatever its name is these days uh, with the images if it has lead images, because obviously these now work with the, the lead images that are provided in Plum 5. And that way you can basically add a pretty content listing to your site. Well, that's the other ones are pretty too, but these have pictures <laughs> or bigger pictures. Okay. And then the code, just to show you that it still follows sort of the same things. Obviously, this is the Kaleva tiles package, which is all our tiles that we made uh, to be used on Mosaic. And same story here, also package made with clone CLI. And all we had to do was add a little configuration in the, in the browser folder. So these again are all the blocks views, as you can see. And now, as you can see, they are um, made for the layer standard tiles content listing, I content listing tile layer. That's actually all you have to do. And of course, make a Python file and a template. So this is the um, same as before. You, we made a couple of helper classes to figure out all the different card classes that you need and specific stuff for the images. Uh, made a base blocks view that handles some publication date stuff. And then it's a bit longer than the Plone 4 version, but as you can see, it's a class that always has the same methods to define all these things. And depending on which view you want, it returns the classes that it needs for those specifics. So this will be card image left and 50-50%. Again, specific to our design system. If we would have to make this for bootstrap basic cards or something similar, the code would even be a lot shorter. So it is a lot of repetition, but it only changes the things it needs to change for all the different box views. And these, this registers all these different views that you see in the in the drop down in the mosaic tile for the content listing. 
oh yeah, I forgot to show the PT, but well, it's sort of the same. Basically, all it needs to do is show the HTML for one card or for one column. I'm looking now. So this is basically just showing the HTML for code for one card. What I forgot to show, because I don't think I have it here. Yeah, no. Uh, basically, on the object uh, in a listing, if you want to call a card view, you just have to call at at card or at at cards left or things like that. And if you want to create listing PTs, it's actually you just loop over all the objects and for each object call at at whatever card you want and it will generate that view for you in the PT. Okay. Almost to the end, God mode for the one still following the Minecraft little guys there. Um, it's actually not just photo. Spoiler alert, no demo. I really, really meant to make a demo for the this talk, but I really didn't have time this week. And I only just asked Victor uh, what the possibilities actually were in, in Volto. So I didn't have time to do that. Uh, and also didn't manage to do it in the classic UI. Uh, the good news is uh, Clone 6 ships with a classic UI, which is awesome because like uh, I've heard in talks before, we're a university, we have to do major migrations and it might not be feasible to do that quickly to move everything to Volto. Um, so uh, for our content listings, box overviews in the classic UI, it should actually be very easy to reuse the code that we have. Again, just CCML registrations and a Python uh, template. And from what I see, Classic UI uses Bootstrap 5, so which means we could reuse all the column classes. I really don't see any issues. So if, if I do a demo, I will post it somewhere so you can see it. Uh, so folder UI. Uh, that's all very nice, but as we've heard this conference many, many times, Volto is all about the blocks and more blocks and more blocks, so we love it. Uh, I actually asked the Volto team and uh, Victor said it should, well, it's actually very much known to them that a listing block and every other block they have probably is very easily extensible because it's basically React components and you can overwrite that in any way you want. So to create that from the listing they have by default in Volto, it should be very easy to make a bootstrap cardish like version of that. I, as I said, I haven't done it. I added a slide here just with, I Googled for like five minutes and this is what, what came up in the first five minutes. Like, oh, there's like training documentation. Thank you, Philip and Katya for making that. That shows you how to, uh, do overrides for Volto content blocks. It shows you how you can use a listing block in the, by default in Volto. There's Volto developer documentation on block variations. I'm not sure if this is the correct documentation. So if if someone from the Volto team tells me it's wrong, I will adjust it so it as, as a better um, listing. I'm just checking to see if I can just quickly show you. We're almost near the end, I think. I have one minute. But yeah, you can go to uh, 6.demo.clone.org, I think. And as you can see, this is the default listing block that comes with uh, Volto. And that's basically all you need. All we need is basically nine out of 10 times title description image and just override, I would say, and clone the PT, but whatever the Volto equivalent is. And that should be very easy to override. If I manage to do it, I will let you know. Ooh, and it's. Okay. How can I help is the last slide in this presentation. Uh, reach out if you feel uh, this would solve a use case for you um, or let me know if you think that's interesting and want to, I don't know, look at the code to use this in your Plone 4 or 5 setup. Uh, I think there's many options to improve this. We could make a collective package. We could uh, make an add-on that, that makes the pretty overviews uh, for the listing block in Volto, or we could document how to do this in Volto. Uh, if there's 
anything like that that would seem useful, let me know. Uh, last slide. Uh, this is who I am, where you can find me, or just go to the comment site and look me up. Uh, you will find me by name or nickname, Spiri Verde. Um, and that was it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Kim, for coming and speaking today. Uh, it was interesting to see all of that. Um, next, we will join in Jitsi. So there's a link in Loudstorm. I'll put it into Slack. Uh, so if you have any further questions for Kim, go ahead and join there. So thank you. Okay. Hey. Thank you.